In this video, I'm going to be using the incredible Flux AI image generator and combining it with an AI video generator to try and make some of the most realistic looking videos. I'll show you how to generate these images for free and I'll show you how I turn them into videos along with other tips and tricks. Okay, let's get into it. So you've most likely heard of this Flux image generator. The results from it are pretty incredible. And I'll just run through a few different websites where you can generate these images for free. So to start off, we have this Hugging Space website where you can use the Flux One Dev model and it's free to use. So you can just enter in your prompt, click run, and it shouldn't take too long to generate the image. I'll make sure to leave all the links to these websites down below. So it's created this image, which most of you have probably seen before. These images have been going viral. It's because Flux is able to generate these really realistic looking images. And if you come down here, you can see the advanced settings where you get to change the size of the image and a few other options. Now this model is really good, but where it really shines is in the Flux Realism model. So let's check out the Realism model. Now I'm running the Flux Realism LoRa off this website, which you'll find down below. This one is paid, but they do give you $2 worth of free credits. And like they say here, for $1, you can get approximately 29 images. So with the $2, you're looking at around 60 free images. And this is the prompt that I had already in there. And the image looks really good. Now, if you're wondering what a LoRa is, a LoRa is pretty much a model trained on a bunch of different images. So I'm guessing this realism model was trained on loads of different really realistic looking photos like you can see in this image. So its strengths are creating these real style images. Now, feel free to mess around with these options here. So if you want a kind of landscape model, you can go to 16 by nine. So let's have a look at a 16 by nine image. And that looks pretty good. And apparently if you change the guidance scale to lower, it can make the results a bit better. So let's have a try at two. And it looks pretty good. There's a bit of a weird hand there, but um, yeah, I would just recommend trying out different options here. And that looks pretty sweet. It's got a really cool angle to that one. And then you can just download your images from there. Another website I found is Xlabs AI which is running the Flux Realism model as well. And here they have some really good example images that they've made, along with the extremely detailed prompt. And this is the kind of prompt that Flux really likes. It likes a good detailed prompt and not just a bunch of keywords thrown at it. So you can always take this prompt here and change a few words to create it more into the image that you're looking for. But if we go down, we can see all of these images look like a real life photo, to be honest. They're really, really impressive. And then if you click on playground, you get to change the options here. So again, you get to change the aspect ratio, the number of outputs and all the other settings. And here is another website to generate images, which is from Segmind. And I found the images generated from this website have been really, really awesome. Again, this just looks like a real photo. So as you can see, it's got the prompt in there and let's try a different one. So I'll try a different aspect ratio. So let's try 16 by nine. You can see the advanced parameters there as well. I'll just leave those as default. So this is an image that's generated in a 16 by nine aspect ratio and it looks phenomenal. It really has nailed that realistic kind of on stage photo look. And here I just changed it to a young man smiling on stage. And I actually changed it from Segmind to Atomic in the prompt. So now behind him, you can kind of see the blurred out words of Atomic. So it's pretty cool that you can put your kind of text or logo behind the character as well. If you want to push your images even further, then you can use RenderNet and their True Touch Realistic Upscaler. There is a free version, so you might as well give it a go. So if you go to Try True Touch, I will drop in an image and just select that. And then I'll set my realism strength to high, select your scale level so that will make the image bigger and click enhance. And because we're on the free version, it might take a little bit longer than if you're on a paid subscription. And as you can see, it's added a bit more realism to the image. 
You don't have to do this step, but if you're looking to really maximize the realism, then definitely try this method. Are you enjoying this content? Then feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. It really does help. Okay, back to the video. And if you're struggling to make prompts, there's this awesome Flux Prompt Generator. So I'll leave a link to that down below also. And it's pretty comprehensive. So let's have a quick look. So I've just put in a very simple prompt here of a man speaking on stage at a tech conference. And I'll just paste it in here also. And then if you come down here, you have loads of different options. So if you choose any of these, these will help guide the final prompt. So you can pick any of these if you want a certain angle of your image. And then if you come down to here, there's character details. And if you come down to scene details, you can choose the lighting, the composition, the pose, the background. And down here you have style and artist. So you can choose what kind of clothes they're wearing and photography styles. There's so many different options, but you can leave them all off if you want. And I'll click generate prompt. And then it adds that prompt that I added here. And then from here, click on generate prompt with LLM. As you can see, it's created an incredibly detailed prompt just from this short prompt I gave it. You can also add an image here if you want to help control the prompt to look more like an image of your choice. And you can choose to edit this final prompt if you want, or you can just paste it into Flux and see what it makes. And the image doesn't look too bad. This is just run through the Flux image generator and not the realism model. Okay, so here's a little tip. If you have an image that you really like and it's in a square aspect ratio, but you want it to be widescreen, then you can use Generative Expand to change their aspect ratio. You can either use Photoshop or Adobe's Firefly, which gives you a number of free uses per month. So I'm on the Firefly website. So if you drag in the image that you want to change the aspect ratio of, all you need to do is go to Expand and then drag out the sides. Or down here, you can choose which aspect ratio and then click on generate. You can put in a prompt, but I like to just leave it blank just so it kind of looks at the area and fills it in with what it thinks should go there. Okay, so it gives you three results and they all look pretty good to be honest. Now you might be wondering why would I want to change it to a wide aspect ratio? And the reason is because some video generators only work with 16 by nine aspect ratio videos. Now let's have a look at taking some of these images and turning them into videos. I will take a few different images and run them through a few different video generators. So I'll use Runway, Kling, and Luma's Dream Machine. I'll run them all with the same image first with no prompt, just to see what they create with the image. And then I can fine tune it with prompts if I need to. So starting off with Runway, I'll go on Get Started and I'll choose the recently released Gen 3 Alpha Turbo. So I've got the image of this man on stage and I'll choose to generate five seconds worth with no prompt. And in Kling AI, I'll go to image to video. I'll drag in the same image. I'll choose professional mode. Again, I'll leave the prompt blank on this one and I'll click generate. And I'll do the same in Luma. I've added the image in. I'll leave the prompt blank. For this one, I'll try one with and without enhanced prompt. So let's check out the results. Okay, so this is the runway version. I think it looks really good apart from a few things. As you can see, it's kind of made a floating mic on his face, which is pretty weird, but I can understand where they're coming from with this technique as normally people on stage have a mic on them. As you can see, his hand morphs into a hand with less fingers on it. So that's not great. But again, this is just the first result I got. Other than those errors, I think it looks very, very realistic. Okay, so now let's have a look at Kling's version. It doesn't look too bad. Now, the problem is the face is definitely kind of morphing, but otherwise the movement of the person is very realistic. Now let's have a look at Luma's version. Okay, so this is the one with enhanced prompt ticked on it, even though I didn't add a prompt. This one I don't think looks very good. It's got weird hand morphing and his face just looks like he's having a out of body experience for some reason. And this is the one without enhanced prompt. <laughs> it's uh, definitely something. Okay, so this is what happens when you don't prompt it. It's uh, yeah, it does this. Very, very interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to try with a few different prompts and I'll show you the results. So this is the runway video and I gave it a prompt of man 
on stage talking in slow motion. Now the reason I've put slow motion is because sometimes it was giving erratic movements, so it was just to kind of slow everything down. And I'm really happy with the result. Again, it's doing this weird thing with the mic on his face, but I'm sure you could get rid of that. Otherwise, it looks incredible. The hands do morph slightly, but otherwise they remain more realistic than the previous video. Now let's have a look at Luma with the same prompt. This is with Enhance prompt on, and it just doesn't look that good. It's morphing all over the place, and it is really disfigured. And here's with Enhance prompt off. And I think it looks a lot better. Apart from the hand getting really weird, you could crop in and just use the face, and it doesn't look too bad. It's got a really nice camera movement to this one, like it's kind of orbiting around the character. Now let's have a look at Kling's version with the same prompt. And it's not that great. It hasn't listened to the slow motion prompt I gave it, and the character just becomes this weird, waxy, video game looking person. This is the problem with using video generators. You do have to probably generate five or 10 before you find one that really works. But I have to say so far, Runway is coming out with the best looking videos. I have generated more videos with different characters. So here's a few different examples. So now let's take it to the next step. Let's add a voice to these people. So to do that, you can either use your own voice or create one in a program like Eleven Labs. And I'm going to show you two different ways on how to get the lip sync on your character. So the first way I'm going to show you is within Runway. When you generate a video, you will see this lip sync icon here, or you can access it from the main Runway page. So I'll click on that and it will ask you to either upload an audio file or you can record audio straight into it using a mic. Or you can type in the text to generate the audio file. So I'll try the type in text first, and then you can choose a voice from down here. So you can choose to preview them. We can't change the inevitable, but we can change how we respond. So there's some great choices here. Cool, so I'm going to go with James, as I feel like it fits this person pretty well. So I'll click on generate lip sync. And if the audio you provide it is longer than the video, the cool thing is the video will just choose to loop so that it won't cut off your audio. Okay, so let's check it out. Hi, welcome to Atomic Games' first ever live conference. We have some incredible content for you coming up. Hi, welcome to Atomic Games' first ever live conference. We have some incredible content for you coming up. And I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. Now here's another version, but with the voice created in Eleven Labs. Hi there. How do I sound? This voiceover was created using Eleven Labs. I hope it sounds okay. Hi there. How do I sound? This voiceover was created using Eleven Labs. I hope it sounds okay. I'm pretty happy with how the voice came out, but you can take it a step further and as if he's speaking in a large room. So I've actually added a slight echo effect to his voice. I'm using Premiere Pro as my video editor and it gives you the option to make it sound like the voice is inside a large hall. And I'm sure other video editors have a similar feature. And I've also added in some ambient crowd noise in the background, and I think it sounds a lot more realistic. Hi there, how do I sound? This voiceover was created using Eleven Labs. I hope it sounds okay. So just by doing a few tweaks, you can make it into a more realistic sounding and looking video. Now I'm going to show you another method on how to get lip syncing and expressions onto your character's face. So this method is the live portrait video to video, and it's on the Hugging Face website, which you can find a link to down below. So I'll add the video of that man here. And then in this one, I've actually recorded myself saying a few words. If you want to try this method out, make sure your camera is locked off and your head is as still as possible. And I've just made it easier for the software by putting it in a square aspect ratio. And then if you come down here, there are a few options. Feel free to experiment with these settings as they can give you better or worse results depending on your video. For this one, I'm going to leave these two checked and just click animate video. It shouldn't take too long, but will take longer if your video is longer, obviously. So let's check it out. Hello everyone, and welcome to Atomic Gains first ever live seminar. Okay, I think that actually looks really good. And then from here, you can download it. 
And what I'm actually going to do is run it through Topaz Video AI Upscaler, which is an awesome piece of software. Otherwise, there are some free upscalers online that you can use. So once I've run it through an upscaler and changed the sound effects like I did with the previous video, I get this result. Hello everyone and welcome to Atomic Games first ever live seminar. And I've also added in a slight handheld kind of camera motion shake to it. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I've actually created a video containing different speakers that I've generated, along with my voice that I've turned into other voices using Eleven Labs. So here is that video. Good afternoon everyone. It's an exciting time to be here today because we're standing at the intersection of creativity and technology, a place where imagination meets innovation. In the last few years, AI has taken incredible strides, producing images that are not only astonishingly realistic, but also pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible in art, design, and even everyday life. But how did we get here? And what does this mean for the future of visual storytelling? Let's explore this fascinating journey together. I am really happy with how they turned out. So by using Flux and a video generator, combining these, I feel like it gives you some of the most realistic human videos I've ever seen yet with AI. Anyway, this is the end of the video, and I hope you can see how powerful Flux is and just the potential going forward with creating these insanely realistic images. If you have any comments you would like to share, please leave them with the community down below. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our content. And if you would like to check out one of our other videos, click the image you can see on screen. Thanks for watching.